Good evening and welcome to Champery in Switzerland. A very warm welcome to you. We are live from the Palladium de Champery. This is the 2020 World Curling Tour. We're at the quarterfinal stages of the Curling Masters Champery, the 10th year of this event. And we've got a couple of cracking pairs of games, teams on the ice this evening. Our featured game is Van Dorp from the Netherlands playing against Team Schwaller from Switzerland. And alongside this game, Team Eden is playing Team De Cruz. So we'll keep an eye on all the games on the ice this evening. My name is Brian Gray, so thank you for joining us on the World Curling Tour live stream. As we join this game in the first end, we see that Schwaller has got the hammer. That is Yannick Schwaller standing in the rings there, giving instructions to his players. So Switzerland playing yellow rocks with the hammer in this first end. We've already seen both these teams this weekend on previous streams. The very first game of the weekend that we brought to you live was Schwaller against Schneider, which Schwaller won fairly comfortably. And then yesterday we had a a belter of a game between Van Dorp and De Cruz. And we can see as as we expect with these teams, a lot of rocks already in play. Nice result. Yeah. All right. Van Dorp yeah, skipping this so team yeah, and playing so so third so rocks. Bringing a very nice top of the button yeah. draw to lie two points in this first end. Yannick just pointing out if they can raise red, red straight back, then yellow would become second shot. So it looks like they're trying the run back there. So pushing red, red, red. The red will be possibly in the rings after this, but the yellow will be better. So basically a little bit of damage reduction here. He's got the hammer, but a little bit of a risk of losing one at this point. As we see Michal Brunner with a run back on this guard. Just over curl the hair. Not the best result. Team Schwaller in a little bit of trouble in this first end here. Yeah. Okay. 
hè? Als het begin ook al iets van 220. Kool is zeg maar 2-3, want hij gaat er weer voor je. Goed, langere loopt zo. Hoog verlies in die af. 4-2. Oh, hier. Ik hoor heel even. Oh nee. Ja, staan. Als je rust. Maar goed, wordt hij rustig langzaam. Ja, klopt. Ik pas niet in de Ietsje, yep. Gewoon eraf doen. Hey, oh, oh. Wow. Oh. Ik dacht dat Sam ook raakt. Hoi, wel. Ja. Arnhem is de lijntjes aan het spelen. Oké. Okay. Okay. Ja, dit is goed hoor. Ja. Moet toch nog nodig. Kwart. Oh, dat is niet goed. Ja. Er waren zo lang geprobeerd. Zo. Zo. Drie Ja. Moet dit uh, dun houden. Goeie bondelijking. Ja. So a nice center guard there from, and please excuse my pronunciation, Wouter Gosgens, the fourth player for Team Van Dorp. So Michael Bruno, the vice skip for Team Schwaller, giving ice for this run back, yellow, red, red run back. Not the easiest shot for the first end for, for Yannick Schwaller. Try and get his team out of trouble a little bit here. Red line two. So Yannick Schwaller, first stone of this first first end. Very unlucky. Got the just got contact with his ye own yellow rock first. Removed one of the reds, but unfortunately the yellow's gone as well. So now red still lying two. And Wouter's going to have a. A free draw with his last stone of the end. Extremely unlucky there. High precision shot, a little bit uh, of a tough one for the first end. Didn't quite come off for them. And now Wouter can possibly come down and freeze on top of that red. And he's going to be lying top and back button. So excellent start for them if they can bring this off. Yannick Schwaller is going to have a real tough shot just to get one point. So Wouter Goschkens, fourth player for Team Van Dorp. With a no pressure draw. Line is really nice, just needs to keep going. It's a little bit on the short side. Pretty good result. And now Schweller has got a little bit more space than he perhaps expected. If that red had been top of the forefoot, this shot wasn't possible. But now there is a track there. Just overcurl that yellow on the right that we see. Come down to the edge of the button, possibly touch the red stone that's on the button and pick up his one point. Tough first end for the Swiss skip. Has to make the forefoot here or he's going to lose three. He's just played a run back, an angle run back, so he's really being tested in this first end. So last stone first end, Yannick Schwaller with a button draw for one point. Sounds very good. Calling, calling suggests it's very good. It's a hair short, I think. Great sweep. Beautiful shot. Yannick Schwaller. Keeping his team out of trouble there. With a very nice draw to the button for one point in this first end. Two tough shots for the Swiss team and 
good for them. Very important that last draw. If they hadn't made that, it would have been a 3-0 deficit already. So they'll be really pleased. So Team Yannick Schweller playing out of the Bern Zeriger curling club. Lead is Marcel Koifler, Romano Meyer, Michael Brunner, and Skip Yannick Schweller. And Team Van Dorp is Lawrence Hoekman, Carlo Glasbergen, Jap Van Dorp is Skip and third. And Wouter Goschgens, and I apologize again for my Dutch pronunciation, is the fourth player in this team. They play out of the Zutemir Curling Club in the Netherlands, and uh, they've certainly come on these last couple of years. Seeing more and more of them. And of course, they are actually the current holders of this cup, winning the 2019 event, beating in the final then. Thomas Ulsrud of Norway. So there is Marcel being asked to play a midway centre guard, I think. Just wants to bring it onto the centre line, a little bit of sweeping at the end there. It's a little bit close to the rings. Be quite happy with that. So Van Dorp asking for a nice corner guard, which he's got, nicely played. Like he couldn't understand how this happened. Yeah. <laughs> It's a classic setup. Yellow without the hammer playing in the center and red with the hammer playing on the edges. As we see Skip Yannick Schwaller asking his lead player. Marcel Koifler to come around that yellow that he threw first. Get into the top of the blue circle, four foot. Line looks great. Maybe even going to overcurl just a hair. The length is just a little bit on the plus side. And there we see it's actually come all the way to the other side. So probably needed to spot more ice and a spot less weight. And as to be expected, Team Van Dorp ignoring that yellow in the circles. They're going to draw around the red corner guard. In turn draw for the Dutch lead around this corner guard. Unfortunately, a little bit too much space as it passes that red guard, so it's probably not going to hide. Good scrub from the boys, brings it into the eight foot, but it's pretty much edge to edge, I think. So Yannick just warning his player, it's a little bit straight down here. Just warning him not to be too positive or overthrow the stone. That's all part of the communication. Always good to have information like that from the skip. But he's all over this guard. Oh. Possibly burnt that rock between the hog lines. If you burn it after the hog line, you have to let it stop. But between the hog lines, it should be removed immediately. I'm guessing that uh, the one of the Swiss skipper supers touched that yellow stone. And if they did, it should really have been removed immediately. 
So there's the setup. That's definitely advantage to Holland in this case. Chance now to get in properly behind this corner guard and set up a chance of a multiple score. But again, just a spot too much space there between the, the shooter and the, the guard. So this double will be possible and I'd expect Team Schwaller to pick that up. Not having the hammer, they don't want too many reds to be lying around. Good thinking from this young Swiss skip. He doesn't want the red to be. He doesn't want the red, the front red, to end up properly behind the corner guard. That would be really not a good result. So he's basically accepting he might lose his own yellow here. Yeah. Thinking ahead, realizing he doesn't have hammer, as we see Romano Meyer, the number two on this burn team. Seems to be very close to the guard again. That's not a bad result. That option they didn't discuss. They discussed a few other options, but not that one. It does open up a chance now for the Netherlands to go in to the eight foot behind that red guard. And if they do that, it'll be getting harder and harder for the Swiss team to remove those stones. As we see Lawrence Hookman, the second player for Team Van Dorp. Giving a good scrub. Needs to be better than the yellow. Very nicely done. That's a terrific shot. There is yellow and red on the side there, which Yannick's looking at. Again, good communication from the Swiss skip. Just saying nine seconds, which is the time hog to hog that the stone should take. And he needs to hit about three quarters. So just confirming with him what how, how much of that yellow stone he needs to make contact with. 100% would be basically on the nose. So 70% is just six or seven centimeters off center. As we see Michael yep. Brunner, the third player on this Bernese team. Yep. Unfortunately, it's over curled on him. So that didn't do much. And now you see the risk here for the Swiss. So the number of reds building up on the side there behind that guard. At some point, the Netherlands will need to move the yellow, and this might be the moment to do that. Don't want to leave it too long. Controlled weight, out turn hit, remove the yellow and maybe roll up to a meter to the right there. Hide behind the other two reds. This end would begin to get a little bit serious for the Swiss team again. And the big difference between this end and last end is the Swiss don't have the hammer. So they'll need to be really careful here. They don't have too many options either. If if the Dutch third here, this is Jat van Dorp who skips and plays third stones. If he can get the perfect roll here. And that's just perfect there. So once again, Yannick's going to be facing 
Possibly three stones without hammer in this second end. Michael Brunner, Brunner's got one more to come. So now they're freezing into the corner there. Come down on the intern. Again, yeah. good thinking from Yannick there. Doesn't need to be shot, would like to be shot, but with so many reds in play, second shot you'd have to accept as well as being good. Far better being a little bit short here in second shot than bouncing off the red. If you bounce off the red and roll open, the situation's just gonna get worse. This is taking off on them, it's curling really a lot towards this redstone in the eight foot, which is gonna touch. And that's what we're talking about. That's really the result you don't want. If Van Dorp can remove that yellow and freeze on top of the red there, the situation's getting a little bit ominous for the Swiss. They've really struggled these first two ends. And they've struggled because the Dutch have been extremely precise with what they're doing. So a controlled takeout from Van Derp. Remove the yellow. Hasn't quite got the roll. Would have really liked to have rolled over 30, 40 centimeters, frozen up on top of that one. So he has left a double. There's no triple, but there is a double. It's one of those ends that even a double is not gonna really help you that much because there's, there's four, soon to be five reds in the circles. But step by step, could have a look at this one. There might, there's plenty of doubles there and triples. This is a good good idea, I like this. So once again discussing just how much of this yellow stone they need to make contact with. I think I heard him say six and a half seconds. I'm not sure if that's right. That's an extremely fast takeout. Needs to have a bit of energy here. Those two reds have got a long way to go, and the red at the on the T line possibly will remove the back one as well. So it needs a bit of energy here. And it was six and a half, and that's a great result. Nice double. Again, saving his team here. That's three really tough stones that Yannick's had. These first two ends. And as I was saying before, even the double doesn't help you that much because there's still gonna be two or three reds in play. But gotta be happy with that result. Keeps them out of immediate danger. Now, this Dutch team would like to come down, put the red into the red circle, and basically show half of all three of the red stones. And by showing half, there you see there, if you can imagine a third rock just behind the, half behind the guard, by showing half on all three rocks, you kind of uh, ensure that if yellow, the Swiss do play a hit, they will roll out of play. So showing half of all three rocks would be the plan here. Need to curl a little bit behind that guard. Don't want to be wide open or you'll leave a double possible triple. As we see Wouter Gojgens. I'm sure that pronunciation is well off, but Wouter is the fourth player on this team. Seems to be a bit close to the guard. 
really pushing there. And that's a pretty good result, considering he did touch the guard. And now there's a bit of a dilemma for the Swiss here. They could hit one and roll behind, or they could just play the double and basically accept they're going to lose two. Looks like they're just going to accept a loss of two by doubling the two reds that you see on the right. Option would be to not play the double, but hit and roll it behind the guard. Good strategy, I would say. Remove these two, because if even if you did make the roll behind the red, there's a good chance that the Netherlands could come, come up and raise the red onto the yellow and score three anyway. So by re removing two here, you basically damage limita limitation of uh, a maximum of two points for the Dutch. Need to make it though. And he's... It's a little bit between the two options. He hasn't really got the... He's obviously not got the double and he hasn't really hidden either, so... He's not going to be too pleased with that result. There's a chip for three now. So all four of Yannick's rocks have been real firefighting stones, real pressure shots. He's made two of them and he's been less successful on two. Which would be recorded around probably 60% on the score sheet, but it's an unfair 60% because all four rocks were extremely hard which is often the case for the fourth player. As we see now, the Dutch fourth player with a chance chipped this yellow, last turn of the second end. Chip this yellow, try to stay in play. Trying to make it curl. Definitely on the wide side at the moment. Really wide at the moment. Well, I did not expect to miss that. That's huge let off for the Swiss. It's a swing of four points. Not sure the Swiss even believe their luck. But there we are. Team Schweller steal a point. And go 2-0 up after two ends. So both teams get together for the one minute between the ends just to calm everybody down and make sure we're all on the same page. Talking about ice and what happened there and anything else that can be taken from the, the ends that have been played. And then make a plan for the next end. So a big steal of one in the second end and the Swiss are two points ahead. Could have been very different. Both ends, actually. We're just reading that there are some small technical problems with the sound. Let us know, please, if that's any better. Yep, 
So if you've just joined us, we are live from the Palladium de Champery, Champery, Switzerland. This is the fourth Swiss event on the of the men's side of the World Curling Tour 2020. And we are at the quarterfinal stages and we have the game Van Dorp of the Netherlands against Yannick Schwaller of Switzerland, Bernie's team. So thanks for joining us here on the WCT TV YouTube channel on this Saturday evening. My name is Brian Gray. Please be sure to subscribe to the WCTV YouTube channel and also join us on Facebook and Instagram. And of course the website www.worldcurlingtour.org. So a big steal in the second from Yannick Schwaller has changed the complexion of this first part of the game. Yannick narrowly escaping a three in that second end. And he was in all sorts of trouble in the first end as well. Swiss haven't really performed yet. They're having all sorts of problems with the amount of curl. That was one more miss from the the Bernese team putting pressure on themselves. Once again, the Dutch team have won round this corner guard and have a, a free chance to put a second one in there. So it's almost deja vu from the the previous end. Swiss are gonna have to tighten up pretty quick. The Dutch, are the Dutch are not gonna let them off like they did in the last end very many times in this game, I would expect. It's just a hair long, that one, so gives the Swiss a chance to get out of this situation, a little hidden. Just roll maybe half a rock in front of the other red there would be the, the desired result. Please do let us know if there are any more sound problems. So this one's taken off on them a little bit. All over the guard. Swiss having all sorts of problems at the moment. Here. Question is if the Dutch can capitalize on those mistakes. Certainly looked very good at the for them in the last end and then at the very last moment when a three looked probable, the fourth player just maybe overthrew a little bit, was wide and instead of three for Netherlands, Switzerland picked up a steal. Swiss are struggling a bit, but the good thing is they keep communicating. They're just talking through the different problems that they're having. Yeah. 
Clean him, clean him, clean him. So the Netherlands trying to cover the stone in the forefoot. Not sure about that one, but certainly over curled. Effectively a centre guard, and that means it's probably going to help Schwaller in the rest of this end. Not the best call. And certainly not the best result. So a real chance now for the Swiss to get in behind the, the, these two centre guards. Thanks, Curling Nord. Good to hear that the sound is much clearer. As we see Swiss third player Michael Brunner coming around these two center guards, trying to get the inside edge of the red, and that's a crack in stone. Beautifully played. And now you see the problem with the call beforehand from, from the Netherlands team. This center guard now is just killing them. They would rather that red wasn't there at all. Unusual call from the Dutch. And the Swiss making them pay for it. So this is Jaap van Dorp, skip of the Dutch team, playing third. Rocks. Looking to come around these centre guards. And either freeze or tap the yellow. It doesn't look long. Probably happy to get the little rub. It's just corrected the line a bit for them. Well, well, well. It's close, but it's still good if you if you cut touch the guard. That's unbelievable to touch a guard so far out. It's about four meters away from the, the, the button. Touches the guard, deflects, and still gets the perfect freeze. That is quite unbelievable. But they'll take it. And now the Swiss have the job of coming down, trying to freeze the red, possibly tapping the red just a little to move the yellow out the way. And you can see Michal, lots of rotation on that rock. Four or five turns on this arena ice. A little bit too much space at the moment, but here it comes. Very nice shot. In fact, no reason to touch the red because yellow is shot, so this is a really nice setup for the, the Swiss now. So calling for a backline length, trying to get as close to that red guard that they threw earlier as possible, come down towards the yellow, and move things around a little bit, but Yap's going to come up and take a closer look at this. And thanks to our sponsors of this event, this is the 10th year this event first started 2011. 
First winner was Peter de Cruz of Switzerland. And last year's winners, as we said earlier, was the team in, on your screen right now. So high quality pairings on these quarterfinal games this evening. There's obviously four games going on. And in a few minutes we'll take a look at the scores. On the other sheets, I'm sure you're all interested to see what's going on, especially that Edin de Cruz game. We see a really nice controlled weight tap from the Dutch team, just trying to get the yellow off the button to get short position. Yellow still positioned number one, but getting closer and closer to the red being in short position as every stone moves on the end. Discussing a few options, including close, closing up the, the left side of the sheet as we look. No timing in these events. This was a world championship that would be using up too much time here. And this is why timing was introduced into, s into curling. Nowadays we have thinking time, a certain number of mi minutes per game for thinking time. To try and speed things up a little bit. I like this call though, he's going to just, Yannick's going to try and come down and basically block up the intern draw to the button. Probably finish somewhere just close to the edge of the 12 foot, just outside the rings. If I understood the Swiss German correctly. So just a few moments, we will update you on the scores of the other quarterfinals. They've left it a good bit shorter, and I, I think that's a good idea. No reason to come too close to the, the four-foot circle. That basically blocks off that side. So the Dutch have a chance to just chip their own red into short position, just a piece of that red on the button. They're only going to get one doing that, but... So they're just discussing their options. Seems to be the call, just catch the edge of the red. Get into short position. So once again, lots of rocks in play. It's been quite a game so far. Not entirely sure that the 2-0 is the correct scoreline for what we've seen so far, but a little bit of fortune for the, the Swiss in the second, avoiding a three. 
but you make your own luck in curling. So if you've just joined us, we're live from the Palladium in Champery. My name is Brian Gray. Yep, yep. Okay, yep. And joining me in the con commentary box this evening. Yep. Yep, heart. You have time. Yep. Is the director, yep. president, heart and heart. chief of this operation, Armin Harder. Good evening, Armin. Good evening, Armin Harder. <laughs> we'll try this again. Hello? Hearing you loud and clear. Oh, you are? Okay. I have no feedback in my, my headset. Hello, Brian. How are you? I'm great. Nice to see you here in Champry, Brian. Having it's a great been time. A long time. It's been six years, Armin. It has, and I'm, I was looking forward to you coming back here again. Uh, I've uh, been, a, uh, like I said, been a long time and I uh, always enjoy your commentary. So uh, it's really appreciate you taking the time coming up here. I know they, they wouldn't let you out of the country or they wouldn't let you into your country where you're flying to. Uh, I'm not too sure, but uh, whatever the reason was. <laughs> all true, all completely yeah, true. We were your, we were your second choice, <laughs> so we're happy you came up. I had nowhere else to go, Armin. Uh, nowhere else to go. Yeah. Give me a home, please, for the weekend. <laughs> No, it's a pleasure to be here, and I have to say, we always have such a really nice time in Champery, even in this off-season. Champery, of course, the ski season starts in another few weeks, and it's always a pleasure to come here and watch these games. So, It's a wonderful place. Uh, we've uh, had some fantastic shot-making here this week weekend. We've had some high level visitors here. I don't know if you saw this afternoon. Thomas Bach was here, the Olympic <laughs> president. I was just talking to uh, Luke Fillet, who's the uh, president of the, uh, the entire region, and uh, he was hosting Thomas Bach here, who was watching the Germans play this afternoon. Very nice. Well, it's been a treat of curling, and the first three ends of this game have just been Wild to say the least, Norman. We've had lots of rocks in play. Well, this looks quite complex what they've got set up here. I just got in into the picture. What what rocks are we at? We're in the down to the last two. Mm -hmm. Skips rocks in this third end. Switzerland are leading by 2-0. They, they had a really tough shot in the first end, but made it for one. And then they stole in the second end in an end that looked almost certain that the, the Dutch team were going to score three, so it was a big turnaround. We've got some uh, some other good games going out there too. Eh? I'm sure you've uh, informed everybody. You can see it on our on our website also. Edin just squeaking in in that late last eighth place. Uh, so that's one against eight is <laughs> Peter de Cruz against Nicholas Edin. Mm, yeah. I'm not sure Peter de Cruz will be entirely pleased with finishing <laughs> first <laughs> after the group stages and getting Edin as their opponent. I should have planned that a little bit better. Right? <laughs> but that's what happens. What do we got here, Brian? We got so here is Yannick Schroller, last rock of yellow. Last rock of his third end. Is he trying to pick that right off the button? Is that what he's trying to do? He's playing a little, little tap. Looks more like a freeze than a tap. Four, so it's just a little bit longer. So force Van Dorp to one. Must be like back of the eight foot, but it's under curled. He almost did the job for him. That's what uh, Van Dorp was trying to do beforehand, push that red into shot position. Mm. Well, Van Dorp's not going to make more than one here anyway, so I don't think. Yeah. Well, there's a double there, Armin, and if he ever made it, he could get three. Yeah. Off the back of the yellow, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, well, red, he's playing red, so remove his own red on the beside the brush there. Right, get Roll over and, and remove those two yellows. It is one option. Well, that could be a little more than three, even. Yeah. No, it could be three. Martin Stuckey working next to us here. Is there a mute 
button on this smart <laughs> in case I need to s sneeze or something. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, this has been a uh, a pretty great uh, weekend under all the circumstances okay. as we're watching this ruck hit the nose. Oh, it's under curled, and he's well, he really overthrew. One that, more, didn't he? one more steal for Switzerland, I believe. Threw that pretty hard. And uh, Wouter has had a bit of a nightmare, to be honest with you, in the second and third end. It just hasn't worked. And instead of having chances of picking up two or even three in both ends, it's another steal for the Swiss, and the Swiss Swiss team go into a 3-0 lead. And while we're waiting for the ends to to restart, we will check out the other games on the sheet this evening. Good thing these mics aren't so sensitive. <laughs> Saturday night uh, in Champery here. Yep. We were just having one or two finger finger troubles. <laughs> but here we go. We're going to look over to sheet A and look at this. Return us with an enormous five in the second end against the young Swiss team Schneider. 5-1 for Return us with the hammer after three. So that's looking ominous for the young Swiss team. Mm. On sheet B... Not a big surprise in some respects. De Cruz has pulled away 6-1 against Edin. Wow. Nicholas Edin has really struggled this weekend. Okay. Yeah, why is that? Lost 7-0, had seven stolen points yesterday. It's the altitude getting to him. Against uh, Jungen of, of Switzerland. And once again this evening, having a disastrous time over well there on sheet B. Played mixed doubles last weekend. Our feature game, sheet C. As we indicated, one more steal for Team Yannick Schwaller and the Swiss jump into a three-point lead. It's been quite a first three ends for the teams. And over on sheet D, the team that beat Nicholas Edin with those seven stolen points. Jungen of Switzerland leading Hess of Switzerland by three points to one after three ends. Well, Jungen having uh, Mark Fister in the team and uh, Simon Gempler in the team are actually... Uh, I think they've been in the final of the Champry Masters uh, over the past 10 years, I think about uh, three times themselves. So uh, um, I think uh, Fister is probably pretty comfortable <laughs> coming into the quarterfinal. Van Dorp obviously being the defending champion from last year. Uh, and as you, as you mentioned before, there are hats off to everybody who's made this event happen this weekend in these trying times and have to say it's been the curling that we've seen has been terrific really nice ice surface out there well i can only i thank you very much i can only recommend to the uh people that haven't seen haven't looked into the games here uh, there, there's been some <laughs> some outstanding shot making uh, in, in in a lot of the games that we have been covered oh we got a we've got an early finish it looks yeah. On sheet B, Edin's packed it in. Edin's yeah. had enough. It's six one after three, and he's he's Edin. off. Edin, excuse me, uh, not his weekend. <laughs> really not his weekend, Armin. <laughs> and on these conditions, that's not quite, uh, <laughs> But you know you can't be top of your game all the time, and uh, if you think in the past how often Edin has been. In the run, you're going to have some bad events sometimes. Probably one of the most successful, if not the most successful yeah. teams of the last uh, 10 years. And, of course, he's in the quarterfinal not playing against an easy team. He's playing against one of the top teams out of Switzerland, obviously. And maybe there's something we don't know going on there. Maybe there's some injury or something that we haven't maybe heard about. Something else going on apart from just not performing at the top level so well the half the team played uh, or half the team played mixed doubles last weekend uh verano actually won the event in uh, the, the world curling tour mixed doubles event in Bern. so uh 
I don't know if that helped them playing. Uh, maybe there was the uh, both uh, Nicholas or uh, Nicholas also played in that event. So maybe the switching oh, back and you know. forth from mixed doubles to to team play. Um, don't know. Maybe the adjustment there could be. Something. It's a different. Oh, it's sure. a different different well, beast, Starman. Very different. Yeah. Different I'm game altogether. I'm just speculating there because mm. I've never played mixed doubles. Whatever happened to Nicholas Eddy, we wish them all the best. Safe trip home, and I'm sure we're going to see them here again playing more world class curling. And wish them the best for the rest of the season. Those guys have uh, curling in their veins. So Peter de Cruz will be very pleased into the semi final. And equally important, a nice early finish for him. He's off the ice at 8.30. He wouldn't be expecting that. And that's certainly an advantage. The game count begins to count up, so it's nice if you get an early finish and they can go and have something to eat now and just chill out for the rest of the evening, maybe watch the games. Semi-finals uh, start tomorrow at 9 o'clock local time, CET. And then we'll have the final on at... Uh, 12.30. So here we go again, Armin, for the third end in a row. The Dutch are lying two behind a corner guard with hammer. And the Swiss are having problems to remove it. Once again on the guard, but that's fine. At least the guard's gone. Now they've got an open double take out there. There's a classic setup if you're looking at that, isn't it? It's nice to see a team use the corner guards. <laughs> see teams putting up corner guards and then going around the center. <laughs> we saw a little bit of that this afternoon with uh, the young Hoosley team. They were throwing up corner guards and then they played everything in the center. So good as you say that the, that the Dutch are using the, the full width of the sheet. Well, they're a little bit older now. They're not, they used to be the young team here not too long ago. And uh, when you're talking about uh, teams like Hoosley or uh, Herlimann or uh, ooh, what else was out there? Heinemann we have Heinemann from Switzerland. Klosner. I mean the young, the young team. Uh, well we got Schneider on, uh, Schneider, on yeah. sheet one. The young teams coming out of Switzerland. There's a there's a lot of talent amongst them. Whether those teams are uh, in their in their forms uh, going to be the teams that we'll see in uh, four or five years. Who knows, but uh, yeah, so, there's a massive amount of a ta talent down there yeah. for uh, for a country like Switzerland. And I th I'm really, really excited about uh, Switzerland's future on the men's side for a change. We've always been... Uh, we've always been... Uh, Switzerland's always been very strong, certainly on the women's side, but uh, I think there's a... Uh, in the next few years, we may see some movement on the men's side for a change. And it could, and well, be, could well be the team we're watching right now, Armin. Uh, yeah, it's putting those teams under pressure, isn't it, Brian? It's putting uh, the, the De Cruzes and the Schwallers uh, under pressure to, uh, to take their performance level a little higher. And, and isn't that what you want to be that's that's what drives your nation that's what yeah, drives absolutely. improvement in your country you yeah. need to have that competition to you get five six push the teams at the top even higher five six teams behind you nipping at your heels boy that's uh, if that doesn't motivate you then uh, you're in the wrong place been very impressed with this young burn team i like the way they communicate they didn't have an easy start to this game but they stuck together and kept chatting and discussing the options and discussing the problems they were having. And here we are now, they're at 3-0 and looking not too bad here. But Schwellers, they do a lot of communicating. Yannick is a very uh, very vocal type of skip. He, he certainly uh, lets his team know where, where, where he wants them to go. Uh, he's pretty clear on his, uh, his instructions and they seem to take it quite well. So once again, the Dutch oh, lying a bunch here down. with hammer. The Swiss have dodged the bullet a little bit in this game so far, Got but triple lined up here. there's uh, once again a few rocks in play. Okay. There's a triple lined up here. Mm. 
maar ook echt gewoon een steen overkult eigenlijk. Ja. Ja. And as we speak, another of the quarterfinals has finished. Already. Joel Returnas also after four ends. Helped by that five in the second end. And Mr. Schneider has had enough and they've conceded. So two of the four quarterfinals finished after an hour. <laughs> Those uh, Italians uh, have been Really very nice shot, beautiful good. triple takeout. We've seen a few of those triples this weekend, haven't we? And uh, <laughs> that's, a that's a fantastic shot. Um, I don't think I've seen so many triples in the event for, <laughs> for a long time. Here we see it again, just catching a quarter of that first one. We get, well, there's a double setup now for a hit and roll, hit and roll behind the corner guard for the, mm -hmm. for the Dutch. Uh, he's going on the onto the back one in the forefoot by the looks of the broom. Getting back to the Italians, uh, the Joel's been uh, quite uh, quite solid for this season. I, I mean, I know it's been a bit of a wonky season, but he's uh, he's done quite well in the events he's played in. So uh, and he's been cruising through here. I mean, he's nobody's I don't think put any resistance up against him so far. So great, great for them to reach the semi-final. I wonder now if that means we have a, looking at the sheets A and B, I wonder if that means we have a return as De Cruz semi-final tomorrow, because they are on sheets A and B. Well, I'll just hang on. We'll side look by side. We'll look, look at the bracket, which, we'll look at the bracket, which is, uh, which you can see on the uh, World Cur Curling Tour dot org website. Uh, Retina and uh, will be playing Schwaller or Vandorp. Mm -hmm. And uh, De Cruz will be playing Hess or Jungen. So we got uh, three, two Swiss teams in the one semi final for sure. And we look like we've got. Uh, oh, we got one. Italians could be the only foreign team in there, maybe, mm -hmm. um, depending what Van Dorp does. We've had. Uh, of course, this has been a very heavily loaded event with Swiss teams because of uh, the obvious conditions. We've dropped a number of uh, foreign teams because of. COVID, teams not being able to travel, unfortunately, including the one that uh, Martin Stuckey is coaching and now he's sitting here working our entire, we're very grateful for that actually, doing a great job with the production. I've got lots of compliments this weekend. So just overcurring a hair for the Dutch there. Time running out to make their two points here, so probably heading for a blank end. Depending on where this rock finishes. You just feel the Swiss team's taking a bit of confidence what's happened in those first three ends and they're looking more settled now than they were at the start of this game. As we see Yannick Schwaller with his last stone of this fourth end. And he has just rolled out there, so the significance of that is that it would probably allow the Dutch team to blank the send. So 
So, Armin, what's new on the World Curling Tour? There's quite a few tours now. I counted six on your website. Men, women, wheelchair, mixed doubles. Uh, yeah, junior, it's five. Yeah. Junior men and women. Yeah. Lots of cancellations, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been a rough year, as uh, well we all know in, in curling circles. Lots of uh, unknowns and cancellations, and that's why I hats off to these events that really uh, I understand why events would uh, would cancel with all the unknowns going on and all the all the uh, difficulties and travel and restrictions. Yep. Uh, but I really I really gotta Lean. tip my hat to uh, to these uh, the on. events that have said we're gonna we're gonna fight through. We're we're gonna go with uh, even a limited amount of teams. Yeah. Uh, I know Bod and Masters, for instance, uh, thirteen teams, but they they ended up going for it and yeah. we saw some great curling and the teams were grateful that they got the play and uh, Champry usually have 24 teams here we're down to 16 um, and, uh, but you know the, uh, the organizers didn't even they said we're gonna we're gonna do our best to to put this event on and I, I really uh, really got to commend them on that even under these conditions right now and uh, so far, fortunately, everything's uh, gone well. There's never any guarantees, of course, right now. And a shout out to all the volunteers here. Francoise at the front desk there, doing a great job, welcoming with a smile every time you walk into the arena. It's always a good start. Yeah. And uh, Stefan, our multitasking volunteer who uh, who actually organized the entire ice helping crew and crew and then had to jump in uh, and skip the uh, the local team that uh, filled that 16th spot and uh, they put a scare in a couple of teams they this weekend. Uh, <laughs> they almost beat uh, van dorp this afternoon <laughs> that would have been a quite a bit of an upset uh, but they were uh, they were quite nervous going out there. I know that the young young uh, a young local team uh, with uh, okay. a uh, bit of a senior local helper. Great facility of here, of course, in uh, Champery with hotel rooms in the arena well it's just a great great place it's just hosted so many events they know they know exactly what they're doing up here there it's they've got the infrastructure that's uh that's perfect it's a well the backdrop we see it in the opening <laughs> the, the opening sun. uh commercial there the sun finally came out today it hasn't been too visible the well last i've couple been of days, here i've been here two weeks brian <laughs> and we had some wonderful weather until you got here huh? <laughs> <laughs> there's been some nice weather up here uh, off and on, but it has got a little crispy. Yeah, just one degree yesterday, I think. Uh, of course, we're getting towards the the winter season. Curling weather. So, blank end in the fourth there. Van Dorp choosing to hit and roll out with his open hit and keep the hammer in this fifth end. But this game's running on. He's three down. He needs to make a move. And the Swiss certainly seem to have upped their game just a little bit since the opening ends and now looking very solid. Okay, the Dutch line. have a uh, couple of games now this weekend. They've uh, fought okay, back in the in the last end, so I, I certainly wouldn't count them out. And uh, they've gathered a lot of experience over the last years that uh, they know they're not out by a long shot, and they know they're they are very capable of. Uh, of uh, putting putting an end together that uh, you put it put a two in here somewhere and you're back in the game. So it takes. They've had three great yeah. setups, Armin, and it just hasn't ah. quite happened for them yet. The Swiss have tended to struggle coming round these corner guards. Let's see if they so. can get it right this time. Talking about using his own here to come off. 
Off his own onto the red. You still remember your yeah. Swiss German? <laughs> I do, yeah. And these boys are from, or at least they're playing out of the Bern club, so that's the Bernese I know, the German I know, <laughs> best of all. Spent 15, 16 years in Bern City. They speak it slowly. <laughs> right up your line. <laughs> and once again, he's they're all, all over the card. That's not what he did. It wasn't it's even. Just, it's deja vu, Armin. He's going to raise this behind us. They've done this a few times. That's and brutal. That's once again. That wasn't even close. <laughs> They've really struggled from the center to the side <laughs> coming around these corner guards with hack weight. It just hasn't worked for them at all. And now they're going to be lying three against again yeah. after this. Well, if Van Dorf can get a hit and roll here from his... Uh, uh, yeah. Just I when I was saying that they'd settle down, they come out with a shot like that to keep us on our toes. And now it's one more chance for the Dutch to try and piece together a two or even a three. Bring them back in this game. Yep, and that's a great result. Yep, 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 yep. Maximum yep, yep, yep. distance between the reds. Okay. No easy double there, Armin. I don't think uh, they could be more concerned about the one on the top of the eight foot right now. He could. So how many rocks have you thrown in the last little while, Brian? The last rock I threw was with you. Oh no. <laughs> Don't say say it isn't true. <laughs> That's the last one I threw. I'm How not long sure ago the next was that, and where was that? that was I don't <laughs> even remember. <laughs> what do, do you what know part of the world <laughs> was that? I don't even remember. That was in Vodge in Poland. Oh, oh, it was in Poland, that's right. That beautiful was new facility. We were speaking about it yesterday on the, on the live stream. And that was uh, the last time you threw a rock? Yep, just over two years ago. Whoa, whoa. Never. And uh, Lodge, Lodge or Vodge, as you say, is, oh, look at that double. Oh, beauty. Big screen. Thin double. Wow. That was nicely played. Very nice shot. Lodge, also home of, uh, <laughs> normally a home of a few of uh, World Curling Tour 100 series events. Very active that, young club there. Nine, seven, I think. Okay, nine. Okay. Nine, two. Oh, oh, clean. Yep. 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 Oh, 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 so the Netherlands throwing their chance of two away here. They've just rolled into the wrong spot, and now they've given Switzerland a relatively easy double. Could have pretty much rolled anywhere on the other side of the rings, and this wouldn't have been even an issue. So the Swiss will just double these out, and quite happy to blank another end if necessary. They're winning by three, so the, the Dutch team are the one that have to make the move. As we see Michael Brunner with an up weight double. It's just taken off on them a little bit. Made it though, just caught a millimeter of the back one, just enough. And uh, the Dutch who had, uh, we're looking at a good setup of three or. Uh, not looking at a lot right now. No, they, their two ender has faded away. Maybe you talk to the umpire, but just so you not forfeit the game. No, exactly. But I don't care. Okay. 
I'll keep the same just hey, discussing something about a broom change there. Sorry, Rules are very strict now on the brushes. Brush heads, of course, have to use the approved fabric. Mm, you're not allowed to change brooms either, so I don't know what exactly okay, he was Kelly, talking about, but Yannick not overly concerned yep, about it. Yep, art line. Yep. Showing uh, yep. sportsmanship. Yep. Yep. Park right out. Yep. So the Dutch yep. changing their strategy a little and decided now to come around yeah. the center guard instead of the side one. This is short and all over the guard. It's right. in the rings though, and because He's they have out. hammer, I'm quite sure the Swiss are going to remove it. So we could be yeah. heading for another blank. It's one thing this team does quite well when when there is when they do get into trouble. They are very good at uh, going in defensive mode and cleaning up the mess yep. that may have developed. And uh, Brunner, a very solid yeah. thrower here. He has thrown very well from the Hi. games we've seen this weekend. Quiet player. Works away very hard, Armin. Yeah. Sort of third that you just love to have in your team. No drama. No drama. Yeah, doesn't attract a lot of attention to himself, but gets the job done. And now the Dutch are going to try and come through between these two yellows. Try and finally force an error or two out of Yannick. Going between the two yellows and possibly freezing the one at the back. As we see Jap van Dorp, skip and third player on this team. With his second stone of this fifth end. Looks to be struggling a little bit. Just to remind people watching us there, if uh, you're enjoying the coverage we've been providing you all weekend here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification button. And anytime we're going online with games from the World Curling Tour, uh, you'll, you'll get notified and uh, won't miss any action. So and we started, sorry, Marlon. <laughs> once in a while, you'll get to listen to Brian Gray commentate, <laughs> which is a treat. <laughs> so just two games left on the ice this evening, and, it, and the other game that we don't see is Hess against Jungen, and Jungen is leading 4-3 with the hammer. That's quite unique what you're doing there. I would have thought an old guy like you would use binoculars or something. <laughs> You sweet talking man. <laughs> so Yannick Schwaller taking advantage of that mistake there by Jap van Dorp. Swiss are going to turn the screw here. Possibly lie three stones in the rings. Looks really nice. Here it comes. Good to try and finish it off. And they've just so made it. Right. It's probably about a quarter yeah. hidden. Yeah. So a really nice result. Well, uh, the Dutch were sitting three at one point in this end. And doesn't look very good for them right now. And with the score at 3-0, not much room for error for the Dutch. If something goes wrong here, we might have another early finish. We sincerely hope not. We want to see some curling. Yeah. So looking for two nice rocks from Voucher here. First of all, top of the forefoot and then somehow find <laughs> space for a second with his last one. Get back into this game. Might be just a little bit short, I think I heard there. Well, they're certainly working it. Line is very close to the guard again. He's already pushed one in, in the sand already, so 
A little bit of a disaster, really, Armin, and That's a little bit. The Swiss are going to turn the screw here. There's going to be a rather unpleasant shot for Voucher with his last stone to save the game. Oh, um, I don't know what the, the Swiss are going to do right now, but they have to be aware of that red onto red redirect. Which, uh, mm -hmm. could, could bring that red rock back onto the forefoot. You see that redirect yep. there, Yeah, exactly. Armin's talking about hitting the, the left side of the left red, yeah? Yeah. And just the red would then rub off the yellow and pretty much come straight down onto the other one. So one option would be to guard that. But that's only for one, Brian. Yep. It's not helping them really. Not really, no. They could throw a guard just half covering that red on the right as we look and half covering this the open draw. That would be a very useful guard. Not quite sure what the Dutch would do then. Probably try and chip the other on the other handle than the in turn as we look. Come down and try and chip that yellow for one that way. But they're not playing a guard. I think they're talking about coming into the rings here. Yannick indicating that the the left side of the sheet, that tap on the yellow is not at all easy, he thinks. He thinks that's really hard, so he's gonna he's gonna leave them that. I like the way they're communicating. But they, if they were playing a World Championships at the moment, they would have time. They would have time problems. Well, we've had three or four conferences like this, <laughs> and at the World Championships, you almost don't have time to, yeah, to think. But the clock is visible, and you can see it running, and uh, obviously puts a little more pressure on here. Obviously, there's no clocks here, and uh, the teams aren't that much under time pressure. So Yannick with his last stone of this fifth end. But we will turn the lights off if they're still here at midnight. Looking for a little bit of a curl, Norman. Just nicely passing that guard. He's going to get a little rub off this top eight. And that's pretty useful. That's blocking the, the open draw on this side. So it's an unpleasant situation for Wouter. Once again, going to have to... He's got the intern draw on top of that yellow to try and uh, make one. Or he's got the... Uh, a little more complicated shot that I was looking at earlier. I don't think he's going to go for that, though. That's a bit of a risk. I would think he's going to try and bump this back so that he's going to... Not an easy shot either, right? A little, well, little bit on the white side, and he's giving up one, too. Yeah, and Yannick, Yannick seemed happy to leave him this. Yannick said beforehand... That he was quite happy that he thought this was a really tough shot yeah. to tap this. It is, it is. Because he's got to stick it there because that one in the back of the eight foot is uh, not too far out of the out of the blue paint. So Now he's crashed a couple of guards. He can't crash this time or it's going to be a seven point to zero deficit. Oh, well that, that, he's got to find a way past this guard this time. Big disaster, yeah. Last turn of the fifth, Voucher with a tap against four for a single. Well, they're working this hard. I'm not so sure about this, Brian. Oh, far, far too close oh to that no. yellow. It's one more, I'm afraid. Oh and no. that will possibly be shake hands because that's a big five which takes the score, unfortunately, for those who want to see a longer game of curling. It's 8-0. That was it. I think they just uh, threw in the... And that was it, I'm afraid. Threw in the hat. <laughs> wow. Good luck tomorrow. We've had three very short games, Armin. Good luck tomorrow. Four ends, four ends, five ends. Okay. As we pan back here, we see all the empty ice on the left-hand side there. And unfortunately, for, from a Dutch perspective, this game is over too. So congratulations to Team Yannick Schwaller from Bern Zeringer, who will now proceed to tomorrow's semi-final, which is at 9 a.m. Central European time. So defending champion gets knocked out of the event. They haven't had a 
dominant weekend, though, I wouldn't say. I think they've been uh, fighting in each one of their games. And uh, Schwaller, other, other than one loss, I think uh, Handley won the, uh, the other two. Mm -hmm. and we he was in our feature game. The first feature game of the weekend was against Schneider, and he certainly had no problems against the young Swiss team there. He made it look very easy. But it's a terrific uh, result for these young Swiss guys in tomorrow's semi-final. Some great defensive play when it was necessary and uh, some mis-execution or, or poor execution by the Dutch players at the uh, also at the wrong interval. They were set up, like I said, every time, but uh, the last half of the, uh, the end didn't uh, produce any results. And the Dutch players are still still smiling there. They're having a bit of a joke, so all is not lost. They've Can you see a smile under those COVID masks? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that man there was having a bit of a joke. So good ap good atmosphere in that team, despite perhaps losing this evening. They they've had some good games. It was a crack of a game against Peter de Cruz yesterday. Probably the best game of the competition that I've seen so far. Uh, collect a little money there to finish in the quarterfinal. Uh, we'll be back on again. Uh, well, you will. Be, no. Nine Lorna will be. Nine o'clock tomorrow. I you understand you're leaving in the morning, are you? Indeed I am. Yes. So Lorna will be on again. Yes, she will. Giving us the semifinal and the final tomorrow, at nine o'clock Central Eastern Time. And that will be do we have a do we know who we know who that's gonna be, don't we? Or is that uh, with three games finished, we should have an idea. We should have an idea. Um we got to we got uh, Retina against Schwaller and De Cruz against uh, Hess or Jungen. And that game is still going on. And they're in the fifth end. Um, that game is 4 to 3 for Jungen over Hess, uh, with Jungen having that one point lead and the hammer. In that sixth end, has also been struggling a bit this week. It's uh, they've just managed to squeak into the quarterfinal. And with that, I think uh, Brian, uh, you're, you've got the lead commentary here. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to call it a day. It's been quite a day here in Champery, but thanks for tuning in to the World Curling TV YouTube channel. Remember to hit that subscribe button and do go to the website, www.worldcurlingtour.org or Facebook, and World Curling Tour Official. And don't forget to like us uh, on those pages too because uh, that's where you're going to get all the information. Thanks for joining us and thanks for all the, the chat on, on YouTube as well. It's been a pleasure to to come and commentate on these games in Champery. Armin, again, all the best, and thanks for your time this evening. Thanks a lot for coming in, Brian. And to our viewers, have a really nice Saturday evening, and we'll see you tomorrow, nine hours, 12 hours from now, nine o'clock, back live for the semifinals. So have a great evening, and goodbye from Champery. Mm.